Does a glass of wine a day really protect your heart? We've all seen these stories on the tabloids and maybe the evening news. A glass or two of alcohol a day can actually protect your heart, or so the story goes. This is particularly meant to be the case with red wine, because red wine, the story continues, is full of resveratrol, a powerful antioxidant found in grapes. And ladies and gentlemen, I am not going to beat around the bush here. I'm not going to use any qualifiers and talk about alcohol in moderation and all of that. I'm just going to tell it you like it is. And as we will see in this video, alcohol and your heart are a sad story, hypertension, heart disease, and strokes. And just before we get into it, if you want to get access to a free video training showing you how to control your drinking, then click the link in the description. I'll be showing you how you can apply first principles thinking without things like AA and therapy and rehabs and willpower. So if you want more information on how to get control of your drinking, then definitely click the link in the description, access the free video training. But now back to the video. So the first thing to understand is that alcohol is a cardiotoxic substance. It's literally toxic to the heart, damaging and ultimately destroying it through a variety of mechanisms. Now it does this both directly and through its even more toxic metabolite, acetaldehyde. So alcohol and acetaldehyde attack the heart muscles in various ways. They disrupt the electrical signaling pathways the production of energy and various proteins necessary for normal cell function. The end result after long-term alcohol exposure is structural and biochemical alterations in the heart muscles. Now we will get into the consequences of those in a second, but first let's look at what is perhaps alcohol's most fundamental impact on the cardiovascular system, hypertension. So alcoholic drinks temporarily raise our blood pressure but this is restored to normal when we metabolize the alcohol. But in chronic heavy drinkers, the hypertension actually becomes permanent. In other words, it persists even when there is no alcohol in the system and it taxes the heart muscles, forcing them to work harder to supply your body with blood every second of every minute of the day. To be at risk of developing chronic hypertension from drinking, you need to consume just two drinks a day. And every further drink after the second one will increase the severity of the hypertension. It's estimated that up to 16% of hypertensive disease in the US may be alcohol related. Hypertension is often called the silent killer and with good reason. It's silent because it can have no symptoms whatsoever. At the same time, it's one of the most dangerous medical conditions, increasing your chances of severe illness or death from heart disease, heart failure, and stroke. Let me just put it to you this way. If you wanted to increase your life expectancy as much as possible by one single intervention, then lowering your blood pressure would be it. So when you get alcohol-related hypertension, it's really one of the things that you want to get rid of ASAP. Now, fortunately, once you stop drinking, it can be relatively easy to resolve. Only two to four weeks of abstinence will often be enough. And for those who don't completely give up drinking, regular exercise may help in lowering blood pressure. Giving up smoking, cleaning up your diet, and losing weight are also proven ways of lowering blood pressure. Next, let's look at strokes. So linked directly to hypertension is the problem of strokes. But what exactly is a stroke? It's when the flow of a blood vessel to the brain is interrupted. This is either due to a clot or the vessel actually bursting. In either case, the results can be devastating, including death. So the stroke is a disease that affects the central nervous systems, but the root of the problem lies in the cardiovascular system. And we now have a mountain of published research showing beyond any doubt that heavy drinking increases your chances of a stroke. A 2016 major analysis looked at all published studies and concluded that just four drinks a day could increase the risk of certain types of stroke by between 67 to 82%. Alcohol most likely increases the risks of getting a stroke indirectly, primary by raising blood pressure and causing weight gain. Chronic drinking also destroys the liver, which is critical to regulating the blood clotting process. Those who survive a stroke can be left with a variety of disabilities, including paralysis on one side of the body, cognitive problems with thinking, attention, and memory, speech problems, emotional problems, and depression. Next, let's look at alcoholic cardiomyopathy. Now, remember earlier how we were saying that alcohol can lead to structural changes in the heart muscles? Well, often the end result of this chronic alcohol toxicity is a disease called alcoholic cardiomyopathy. This is when the shape of your heart literally changes as the alcohol causes certain muscles to thin and weaken. 
Think of a rubber band that has been stretched to the point of losing its snap. As you can imagine, this has an adverse impact on normal heart functioning, lowering the heart's ability to pump blood throughout the body. The results are felt throughout the body and can have a devastating effect on the person's quality of life. Symptoms can include chest pain, shortness of breath, fatigue and irregular heartbeat, swelling of the extremities, loss of appetite and coughing. To be at risk for this disease, you need to be consuming seven or more drinks a day for a period of at least five years. The most commonly affected demographic are males ages 35 to 50. This is a potentially deadly disease. And if you don't completely give up drinking, you have a 50% chance of dying within four years. Next, let's look at the atrial fibrillation. So another common heart complication for heavy drinkers is this so-called atrial fibrillation. This is a rapid and irregular heartbeat that you'll sometimes hear referred to as AFib. Another common term for this is holiday heart. This is because while on holidays, people often tend to drink very heavily, along with partying and sometimes even smoking. And this type of atrial fibrillation typically lasts a few days and goes away on its own. Doctors call it paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. When the AFib lasts longer than this, it's called persistent atrial fibrillation. And it's this persistent AFib that is both more dangerous and common in long-term heavy drinkers. A 2016 review in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology was titled Alcohol and Atrial Fibrillation, a Sobering Review. And the numbers are sobering indeed, with heavy drinkers having as much as 50% higher probability of developing atrial fibrillation compared to non-drinkers. The review concluded that alcohol consumption probably leads to atrial fibrillation in two ways, directly through alcohol's direct cardiotoxic effects, which we described earlier, and indirectly through alcohol's contribution to obesity and hypertension, as well as through disordered breathing patterns during sleep. Now, the good news is, is that those who stop drinking, the AFib will often resolve. For those who continue to drink, on the other hand, the prospects are bleak, with a five-fold increase in the risk of death from cardiovascular disease. The overall mortality risk increases fourfold compared to the general population. You see, because the heart isn't pumping regularly, but instead generating beats in a rapid and disorganized manner, its chambers don't pump as effectively. This taxes your heart, forcing it to work harder. And it also increases the chances of developing blood clots. And these are more likely to end up in your brain. And remember guys, if you do want the heart protective benefits of resveratrol, buy yourself some grape juice.